Father, in the name of Jesus, we exalt you, Lord, and we honor you. We recognize how great you are. We recognize how worthy of our praises you are. We recognize that you love us so much, you send the Lord Jesus Christ to die for us and to bear all our pain, all our sickness, all our infirmity. Lord, accept our presence in Jesus' name. There will be joy in every heart. There will be joy in every family. There will be joy among the members of the church. And the invitees, there will be joy in Jesus' name. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you help us to catch, to receive, to enjoy, to possess what you have got for us. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can be seated. I want to read a passage of scripture before I go on. It's in Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Reading verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. Philip, a great evangelist, Philip, the servant of God. Philip, one of those seven elders chosen by the church to help in the distribution of food. Philip, when all the believers were scattered out of Jerusalem, he went to Samaria. And then we're told he preached Christ. I want a wonderful message to preach. No other message. From Genesis Revelation, everything is about Christ. And as you go all over the Bible, the whole message is about Christ. Christ, the Son of God. Christ, our Savior. Christ, our substitute. Christ, our sin bearer. Christ, our sanctifier. Christ, the spirit baptizer. Christ, our sufficiency. He preached Christ unto them. He preached the fullness of Christ. The Christ who saves. The Christ who heals. The Christ who delivers. The Christ who set free. The Christ who is all in all for us. Philip went down to Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. Anywhere you go, talk about Christ. What he has done. What he did on the cross. What he's doing today. What he will continue to do for everyone that calls upon him, that believes in him. He preached Christ unto them, by the way. After this, verse 5. Near the end of the chapter. As he met with the Ethiopian eunuch. Again, he preached Christ unto him. Everywhere he went, he preached Christ. And everywhere you go, you preach Christ. And we're told in verse 6 of the people was one accord. Give heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Always two things. There's something for you to hear. There's something for you to see. He said, he spoke. He preached, that's what you hear. Then he worked miracles, that's what you see. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. And this is where I'm going, verse 8. And this is what you need, verse 8. And there's the report you are hearing from every city, verse 8. There's the report we are gathering together from every crusade location, verse 8. This is what God did, what God is doing today, and what God will continue to do, verse 8. This is what we have experienced everywhere. We have lifted up Jesus, we have honored Jesus, we we'll proclaim Jesus, we we'll preach Jesus as the answer to every, every problem of man. This is what happens everywhere. 
And there was great joy in that city. There was great joy in that city. Everywhere you preach about Christ, everywhere you honor Christ, everywhere you show Christ to the people, there's salvation, there's healing, there's deliverance, there are signs and wonders, and it's always great, great joy. Now, we have come to this stage. And the question I'm asking myself is, we talk about freedom. We talk about healing. We talk about deliverance. We talk about salvation. The question is this, after freedom, what next? Have you ever thought about that? That the Lord will make a lame man to walk and he goes back home and I'm asking the lame man after healing what next are you going to sit down at home are you just going to be looking at the mirror I am healed now I can walk are you going to be just gazing at the mirror for the rest of your life after the healing what next a man had been blind. He had been on the side road before. And then he comes in touch. In contact with Christ. And Christ the light of the world. Took the darkness of this man away. And now the eyes are open. And I'm asking the man the question. After the receiving of your sight. What next? What do you mean by what next? I'm saying now you can see. Are you going to learn how to read? Are you going to try and get a job? Are you going to go into a profession? Are you going to use your sight? Are you, go, are you going to be dependent on society for the rest of your life? Now you can see what next. And then somebody has been bound. You heard about that woman. She had been bound low these 13 years. And now the freedom came. The deliverance came. And the power of the Lord arrested her. And then all that spirit of infirmity was driven away. I'm asking the question. After your liberation. After your freedom. What next? Are you just going to stay in the house. And just be saying. I am glad. I belong to Jesus. I am glad. I am healed. I am glad. I am happy. I got a miracle. What next? Will you get a job? Will you learn a trade? Will you go to the market? Will you plan your future? Will you do something with your life? Now, all the bondages are gone. All the chains are gone. All the hindrances are gone. All the hurdles are removed. The limitation of your life is taken away. Your brain is now correct. Your eyes, you have 20 20 vision. And your ears, you can hear very well. And your limbs are now walking. And then your waist, you are not bent anymore. Your hands, you can hold, you can handle, you can use your hand after your healing. What next? I learned of a particular man. And this man, he had taken exam so many, many years. It was an exam for law. He wanted to get a, a degree in law. And he failed and failed and failed. And then his own children, also they were interested in studying law. And they met him in the class. And they were taking the same exam. And the children, uh, you know, two of those children passed when they got to that age. And the man was still failing the exam. But he said, I have a brain. I have the books. I have the experience. I've done it before I failed. I will try again. And that man eventually passed the exam. And when he passed the exam, he was employed in a good place. I'm asking you the question. Now you're free. What next? Now you are healed. What next? Now you are delivered. What next? Now you can get up. Now the pains are gone. Now the evil spirit of making your life is gone. What next? How are you going to use the freedom to make your life a better life, a richer life, a higher life, 
a productive life, a prosperous life, a successful life, a life that contributes something to the world in which you live, that you make the world in which you live better than when you found it after the freedom. What next? That's what we mean from freedom to a glorious future. From freedom to a glorious future. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, the purpose of freedom through Christ. Why are we free? Why are we delivered? Why? Why? Uh, you know, if you, if you study children, children have a lot of lessons for us to learn. You know, your little children at home, you see, children, we're going to the village. And the next question is, why? You say, children, Christmas is coming. And we're not going to go to the village. We're going to stay in town. Why? Now, we're going to, we're not going to wear this kind of dress today. This is the kind of dress we're going to wear today. The question is, why? You know those children, they teach us. And we need to learn. We as adults, we also have to be asking why. I am free. Why? I am healed. Why? I am delivered. Why? God has given me a miracle. Why? We must know the why. The why. The why of our healing. The why of our deliverance. The why of our freedom. The purpose of freedom through Christ. Number two, planning the future with courage. Planning the future with courage. Now that I am free, now that my yoke is broken, and I look at tomorrow. What do I want to become tomorrow? What do I want to do tomorrow? Or do I just want to be in this single place, just moving up, merry go round? How am I planning the future? Now that there is nothing holding me back, sickness is not holding me back, infirmity is not holding me back, oppression is not holding me back, and then. Um, insanity is not holding me back epilepsy is not holding me back now that my yokes are broken the fetters are broken the chains are removed and now I am free how do I want to use the freedom to plan my future the planning planning the future with courage if you ask me somebody has planned the future he said, in five years' time, there are ten things I want to see in my life. In five years' time, I don't want to remain at the same level in my job. I want to be at this level. In five years' time, I want to be better in my profession. In, in five years' time, I want to be able to have this property. In five years' time, I want to build a house. In five years' time, I want to get another degree. In five years' time, I want to have this, I want to have that. I'm planning my future because now I am free. There's no limitation anymore. And since there's no limitation anymore, I can plan my future now without any limitation. And then I can say, this is what I'm going to achieve. You ask me a question then. What is the one single thing, the one single thing, the one single thing that I need if I'm going to get to that future? And I tell you, that single thing, the word is concentration, concentration. When you say, this is where I am going. You know, where you are going determines the direction in which you take. You're not just going to follow everybody. You don't know where they're going. What's their plan? What's your own plan? Because where you are going, your destination determines your direction. Your destination determines the place you are going to take. Even the, the means of transportation you are going to take is not just because we're friends. You know, he is my friend. I am your friend. I am going this way. You are going this way. Although we are friends, although we are friends, our destination determines our direction. And therefore I say, bye-bye, my friend. Don't you love me? I love you, but I'm going to a different place. I love you, but I have a different destination. I love you, but 
but have a different goal, a different dream, a different destination, and a different future. And my future, my destination, my destiny determines the direction that I take. And then I concentrate. You know, you stand at the road over there, and you know where you are going. And because you know where you are going, as the vehicles are coming, you are looking. Is that one going to my place? You concentrate. Focus and concentration, the power. Point number three, the power of focus and concentration. The power of focus and concentration. You know, we, you need to be asking the question every time. You know, sometimes the people, when they come to this church, they're born again. And they're not asking them the, themselves the question, after salvation, what next? You get married. After marriage... What next? You have children. After children, what next? You've got a job. Miracle of miracles. After you've got a job, what next? You're trying to register a company. And that was your goal. I want to register a company. I want to register a company. You go there, they said the file is lost. You go over there, we cannot find the file. And then you come for prayer. And then the Lord gives you a breakthrough. You go there, they found the file. Now they register the company. And then you give testimony in the church. Praise the Lord. The file they said they didn't see. They have seen it. My company is registered. And then in the night, uh, evening devotion with your family. Praise the Lord. We got a miracle. The company is registered. Then the next morning, praise the Lord. Isn't God wonderful? Isn't God so great? The company is registered. Then you see your friend. And then you say, praise the Lord. Let me share my testimony with you. A company is registered. Somebody should ask you after registration of the company, what next? Always be thinking about that.